I'm on a Windows 2019 server using a failover cluster. I've got a two node cluster, as you can see here. And what I want to do is I want to add DHCP to make it highly available. So if I go to my roles in failover cluster manager, we see there's nothing there. But prior to adding this as a role in failover cluster manager, we need to install DHCP on both of the nodes. So that way we can add the role and it'll be highly available. So that means that one server can fail over to the other automatically. So I'm going to start by going into server manager, click on add roles and features and click next. And I'm going to go all the way until we get to our server. I'll start with file server one, then I'll go back and do file server two. Next, I'm going to click on DHCP server, click add features. Next, don't need any additional features and install. Installation of the DHCP role usually only takes a couple of minutes depending on the speed of your server and the amount of resources that you have available. And we were successful in installing DHCP on server one. Now I'm going to do the same thing on server two. So back to server manager. Next. This time I'll choose file server two. You could also just go into file server two and do the same thing there. But this way I don't have to switch servers. I can do it all from one location. So next what I'd like to do is I'd like to add in the DHCP role, but I can't do that yet because I need to make sure I have storage. So my storage so far is a cluster shared volume. So that's already in use. And I've got a disk witness in Quorum, so that's already in use. So I have to make sure that I have another drive that's not being used for anything. Now, fortunately, I do. I have a drive that's five gigabytes. It's my E drive, and it's connected through the iSCSI controller. So it's available for both my nodes. Both of my different servers have access to it. So I'll click on Add Disk. And it found my five gigabyte drive because that's the only one that's available to both nodes. And now it shows up as available storage. So that means it can be used for our DHCP. So I'll go back to roles. I'll right click and I'll choose configure role. So now we're going to get the wizard to come up. I'm going to choose DHCP server. Now, if DHCP was not installed on my nodes, then I'd get an error at this point saying you've got to install that first. So I'm going to give this the name. I'll just keep it simple. I'll call it DHCP. This is a name that the other servers and computers that need DHCP will be able to access it by. And I'll give it an IP address of .203 because I know there's nothing at that IP address at this time. I'll click Next. And it found my storage. Make sure it's the 5 gigabyte one. Yes, it is. Check the box. Click Next. Make sure everything looks the way it should. And go ahead and add it. And it was successfully added, so we're good. You might see that it's pending for about a minute before it kicks in, depending on the speed of your server. And now it says it's running. So I can right click on it and I can choose Manage DHCP Server. And from here, I can add in a scope and anything else that I need to make my DHCP server run. So you're seeing it, it's showing. Dot 203. It's not showing the local IP addresses of my individual servers. That's dot 115 and 114. Dot 203 is the cluster IP address, and that's the one that we want. So if I go into IPv4, we can see I can create a new scope by right clicking and choosing new scope. So the wizard comes in. I'll just give it some real basic settings so we can do this as a demonstration. And I'll just give it a couple of IP addresses. And we'll do a slash 24. And if I needed to add anything else in, I could do that here. But I'm just going to go through this particular wizard and finish up. Now, I have some extensive DHCP videos that will show you even more how to do this in my Windows Server 2019 and 2016 playlists. So you can check those out if you need to understand how to configure DHCP. But this is all about DHCP in a cluster. Next thing I want to do is I want to uh, start my scope. Because you can see right here, it's got a little red square there. And we can see our address pool. There's no leases as of yet and we don't have anything else set up. 
So before I can start it, I'll need to right click on it and choose authorize. And you have to be logged in, of course, as an administrator that has that right to authorize it. And then we can go to all tasks and we can see it's already started as soon as I authorized it. If it hasn't, just go ahead and click the start button. All right, so refreshing should give us a nice green box and it does. We see the check mark. And we see also there's a blue exclamation. So the blue exclamation means that it is highly available. So it's not just uh, going to be on, but it's going to be on for two different servers. I'm going to close DHCP since we know that that's running and we can see that it's running on file server two. So let's say we need to bring file server two down because we need to uh, run updates on it. So what I can do is I can do right click. I can choose move. And I can say best possible node. Now we only have one other node, so it's automatically going to go to number one. Otherwise, I could select it if I had more nodes than that. So we can see it's moving to one, and now it's done. That's how fast it is uh, to moving from file server two to file server one. And it says it's running. So now all I have to do is shut down server two, and it'll run on server one continuously. If I would have seen server two go down on its own, it would have also moved over to one automatically as well. So that's how we add DHCP server into failover cluster manager on a Windows 2019 server. And it also works on older servers such as 2016 and 2012 as well.